Hello everyone, Cat Goblin and Martin here, and today I'll be showing you all every single enemy in Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, it's been a while since I did an enemy review on a Sonic game. The last one I did was on SA1. Anyways, if you liked playing the first adventure game, then you'll definitely like playing the second one. Well, sure, it may not have a cool hub world area you could just free roam in, but at least going to levels is more convenient, as you're brought straight to the action instead of just getting lost in this huge jungle or trying to find a keystone. I've been playing this game a lot on my PC, and I recently got a Sega Dreamcast with Sonic Adventure 2 on it, so most of my footage is going to be from the Dreamcast with a few from the PC version. And without further ado, let's get straight to the enemy facts. A few things to add before we get to the enemies is that if you collide into an enemy or if you get hit by one, then you lose all your rings, lose your shield, or just straight up perish. All enemies can give out points when defeated, which contributes to your ranking. Defeating them is quite simple, as you can use a homing attack, fire homing missiles, punch them, etc. You can also defeat enemies by throwing pickable objects at them, such as this Keystone and Pyramid Cave, and even Omachow. Yep, this is probably the most helpful he's ever been. Also, a few of the enemies that shoot bullets or toss bombs can destroy other enemies. With bombs, they could potentially blow themselves up. All enemies are not affected by gravity changes, probably because they're either hovering or have magnets on their feet. And lastly, a few of these enemies can fight you underwater. Now let's get on with the review. Adventure 2 has two, well technically three, factions that you meet throughout the course of the game. Let's begin with the Guardian Units of Nations, or also known as GUN, GUN. They're basically like the United Nations Peacekeeping Force, and boy do they have a lot of robots and weapons for catching fast hedgehogs and evil supervillains. It would be rude not to start with this one, as this is the most iconic foe you encounter. So you know how in Adventure 1 you have an orca that chases you? Well in this game, it's a giant truck owned by GUN that chases you down the street in City Escape. All you do is outrun the truck and try not to get hit. You could even hit the truck yourself, which knocks it back a bit, though you take damage. Then by the end, it crashes into this archway. Hope you got insurance, buddy! I like how massive the truck is. It takes up two lanes of the road. And also, how is this allowed? You call Sonic a criminal? Well, look at this guy or girl driving the truck. They're destroying people's cars and stop signs. I sure hope Gun compensates these people, otherwise things would end up downhill for them. Now let's move on to all of Gun's robots, which all drop Chaos Drives when defeated. Starting off with the Hunter series, we have the Gun Hunter that shoots bullets, Laser Hunter shoots lasers, obviously, and the Shield Hunter which is just a laser hunter with a shield that can block all your attacks. All three Hunters aren't very difficult to take out. They spawn in by dropping down in front of you or start off in a folded state. They remind me a lot of Transformers or Super Battle Droids. The Laser Hunter shoots faster than the Gun Hunter. With Shield Hunters, you attack when they're about to shoot, or just somersault onto them as Sonic or Shadow. In certain levels, the Gun Hunter can shoot a blue plasma shot which can get you stuck in place, giving them the perfect opportunity to hit you. You just mash the jump button to get unstuck. You can see inactive Hunter's weapons bed all folded up. And there is a Gun Hunter that chases you in Iron Gate, Radical Highway, and White Jungle. This one just hovers towards you using its back jet engines, and it can shoot, and if it bumps into you, it will get knocked back.
Next, we've got the Beetle series, and there are a lot of different types of beetles. So there's the Mono Beetle found in these places, and the Spark Beetle. All of the beetles are pretty much military drones used to survey the area, but anyways, both these beetles pretty much hover in place and they allow you to use them as stepping stones to reach other areas. Or they rack up your points when playing as Tails or Eggman. The Mono Beetle can also become invisible, but will appear when you're close. And I found that in Crazy Gadget, there's one that will actually follow you. The Spark Beetle, on the other hand, holds a shocking surprise. From time to time, it generates an electric force field around itself so that you can't touch it, but when the shield's down, you can physically attack it. And they can't really deflect lock-on missiles, so defeating them as Eggman is a complete joke. <laughs> The Gun Beetle and the Gun Wing. What's the difference between them? Well, one hovers while the other flies. As of the name, these two beetles have a turret, which is basically a gun, that shoots bullets. They shoot pretty slow. However, once you get to the later or hard mode stages, they can rapidly shoot more bullets. You can also see that Tails and Eggman are able to lock onto enemy bullets, which you can shoot, and this makes it a tad bit harder to lock onto the beetle as you're always targeting the bullets. Bomb Beetle and Bomb Wing? Well, what's the difference between these two you might say? Well, one hovers around a circle or in place while the other one swoops in. And both deliver a bombastic surprise. By that I mean they drop bombs. Remember the bombs that those robo monkeys in SA1 threw and how you can pick them up to throw it back? Well, you can pick up bombs here too, only the regular sized bombs. In some stages, the Bomb Beetle can drop red bombs that explode immediately on impact, or a huge bomb that creates a massive explosion. The Wing version just drops the red bombs, and is only found in two stages, Eternal Engine and Sand Ocean. The final two beetles actually help you, those being the Gold and Spring Beetle. The Gold Beetle is found in every stage except for Route 101 and 280 because you know those are driving missions. Weapons Bed, Green Hill Zone, and Pumpkin Hill Battle Edition. Yeah, it appears in the Dreamcast version of Pumpkin Hill but not in the Battle version. It's kinda odd. The Gold Beetle's sole purpose is for you to destroy it so they can get that sweet 1000 points. If you're too slow though, it will disappear. You can get a good look at them in Cannon's Core. The Spring Beetle helps you with extreme platforming. It's got a red cushion on its top which is simply a trampoline that you can use to reach high areas. There is a way to destroy it, and that is by getting this bomb power up that destroys everything, or by hitting the bottom or face part of it. Next is the Hawk series, similar to the Beatles but bigger and faster with more firepower. The Gun Hawk fires bullets, Laser Hawk of course shoots lasers, and the Skyhawk flies in shooting bullets at you. 
the gun and laser hawk both hover in the air. In later or hard mode stages, the gun and skyhawk can rapidly shoot multiple bullets, and the laser hawk shoots faster. Not incredibly difficult to handle, although like the hunter, there is a chaser gunhawk, found in the following levels. There are two types of chasers. One will chase you with its two front jet thrusters out sporting a spike, and will try to ram you, while the second hawk is a gun version that just chases you while shooting at the same time. Coming in is the Rhino series. We have the Rhino Jet, Rhino Spike, Rhino Metal, and the Rhino Cannon. Clearly, Gunn saw that Eggman has cool majestic Rhino tanks that they decided that they should have some of their own. With a few of Gunn's robots, you can see the similarities with Eggman's badniks in SA1. The Rhino Jet has a built-in jet engine on the back of it, and when it sees you, it will use it to try to charge you. The Rhino Spike is the same thing, but has spikes on the top which means you can't jump or do a homing attack on it. Then the Rhino Metal is also the same, and is invincible to attacks. The only way to defeat it is to use Sonic's magic hand ability, or you can stand by an edge and as you move out of the way, it will drive off of it. The other two can also drive off edges. It's basically like playing with a bull. The Rhino Cannon, on the other hand, does not charge, but remains stationary in Pumpkin Hill and Dry Lagoon. As you can tell by the name, it has a long barrel attached to it, making it look more like a tank. It shoots bombs at you, and in Pumpkin Hill Hard Mode, it can fire those red bombs that explode on impact. Then we have the Hornet series. There's Hornet 3, Hornet 6, and Hornet 9. The Hornet hovers around an area, and as you can see, it has some arms each carrying a bomb pod. When it sees you, it will prepare the bomb pods and send them at you like rockets. The bombs are very good at homing in on you, but if you keep on moving around, they'll end up hitting the ground. All three Hornets function the same, except for they have different number of bomb pods. Hornet 3 has 3, Hornet 6 has 6, and 9 has 9. After launching the bombs, it's pretty much helpless. Since it takes a while to attack, you can destroy it before it even has a chance. And the one good thing about the Hornet is that they give you a ton of lock-on points when playing as Tails or Eggman.
the last two Hornets are pretty rare throughout the whole game. In Cannon's Core, Eternal Engine Hard, and Lost Colony Hard, you'll come across the Laser Hornet. Rather than using bombs, it has three barrels on its pods that shoot lasers simultaneously. Not really difficult, but I think it's an interesting variant. This Hornet here is called a Phoenix, only located in Meteor Herd Hard Mode. It's basically a Hornet 3 painted red. The only difference is that it moves around much faster than any other Hornet. Its red color does make it look cool though. Gun also uses aircraft such as jets, and their jets are called Blue Eagles. In Metal Harbor, Weapons Bed, Mission Street, and Radical Highway, you see them fly in and drop missiles. You can shoot them down as Tails or Eggman, and what's also interesting is that in Radical Highway and Mission Street, there is a jet that will chase you whilst firing its machine guns. If you also look carefully, you can see that the jet has a pilot, which means that yes, you have directly killed a person and this really makes Tails a true wanted criminal. So that was Gun. They're not your main antagonist, but rather a secondary antagonist. A force that just annoys you, but turns good and learns from their mistake. Man, they are kind of jerks though, killing Maria, executing Gerald and all of his friends, accusing people, and most vile of all, harassing turtles. Whatever happened to saving the turtles? That's just cruel. Be free, little buddy. We also learned that you can kill gun pilots. Next, let's talk about Jailed Robotnik's Artificial Chaos Experiments, which also drop chaos drives like the Gun Robots. The Artificial Chaos Experiments are technically still owned by Gun. They are supposed to be weaponized to chaos creatures, and as you can see, their head and liquid body closely resemble chaos. Artificial Chaos P-1 is the most common type you'll see in a lot of the arc levels, and they have two different types of behaviors. First are the aggressive ones. Probably the most annoying enemy in the whole game. When you're close, they'll try to grab you with their long blue arms that reach pretty far, as well as shoot lasers from their eyes. These chaos experiments are very good at sniping you, making them a challenge for Sonic and Shadow. But if you just maneuver around them, then you can destroy the head, which is the vulnerable part. Second is the stationary type. It will just stand there shooting eye lasers, and then there are some that spin their head rapidly while shooting. There is also the float type, an aggressive one that floats in the air, and there are ones that shoot lasers at you while moving around. Eternal Engine in Cannon's Core has the Artificial Chaos P-1 Guard type. It hides its head inside its liquid body to protect it, which makes it so that you can't defeat it from a safe distance. So what you have to do is to go close to it to bait its head to come out. When its head is out, it will try to grab you like any other aggressive one. I found that if you keep on shooting it, you can go behind it and then shoot it before it even has a chance to attack. Last of the experiments is the Artificial Chaos P-100, found in Crazy Gadget in Cannon's Core. When you're near it, it will use its liquid body to spawn in smaller bots called cells to attack you, which do explode. Once you destroy the head of the experiment, all of its minions will be destroyed with it.
Eternal Engine and Cannon's Core Hard Mode have these cannons or floating turrets that shoot these little bombs. You can't really destroy the turrets, they don't have the best accuracy, but you can get tons of points by locking onto their shots. It's kinda unclear what the artificial chaos experiments are doing on the old Ark. We can assume that because the Ark was shut down, no one was performing maintenance on it, making them infest the area. Or perhaps Gerald Robotnik gave them an order to protect the Ark before he died, which would explain why they protect the cannon's core. The same thing could be said about the gun robots there, since you also see them protect the core as well. Anyways, let's move on to our last faction, the Badniks and Eggman's army. And instead of dropping Chaos Drives when defeated, they release a small animal just like an SA-1, so that you can upgrade your Chow stats. The Kikis from SA-1 make a return in this game, and you can find them in Hidden Base and Egg Quarters. They function the same like before where they throw bombs at you, but just like the Bomb Beetle, they can also throw red and giant bombs in hard mode. Still super easy to defeat, and I like how they dance around in a circle. It gives them even more personality. The Golan Unidasu also return, but their behavior is a little bit different from the previous game. Both appear in Death Chamber, with the Unidasu also appearing at a hidden base. Before, the Unidasu would use its spinning spike balls to throw at you, or make them spin around itself in a giant ring. Here in SA2 though, it just chases you. The spike balls still stay close to it as a weapon, and defeating it as knuckles or tails isn't a problem at all. The Gola functions almost the same from its SA1 counterpart, except its attack is a bit slow. It will chase you and it uses these small flaming orbs to create a ring of fire around itself. In SA1, the Gola would create the fire ring faster, but here it's super slow. You can even destroy the orbs, which makes the Gola completely helpless to the point where it has to bump into you to do damage. Next, we have the Booze. Whoops, wrong game. There we go, that's the one, and they're located in all these levels. I'm not sure if Eggman is in cahoots with them, or if they act on their own accord. Depending on the stage, they can have different behaviors. Some Booze can bounce around and will grab you, causing you to be stuck in place, making you vulnerable to other enemy attacks. Other Booze that patrol around will chase you, dealing damage if they collide into you. And then there are the Booze that jump scare you. They don't damage you, but rather make you stumble. The tiny boos that you see in Death Chamber can also jump scare you. The boos aren't that many seen as when you hit them, they disappear. Also, Pumpkin Hill has that train that can damage you if you're in its path, and you can get it out of the way by switching the tracks. Any 
Another spooky enemy is the Boom Boo, appearing in Death Chamber and the following hard mode stages. It's a giant boo with button eyes and a stitched up mouth. When you're in this ghost sight, it will follow you very slowly. If you hit it, it will turn into a big boo that shuffles faster and wants to grab you. When you hit that boo, it turns into an ordinary boo that wants to collide into you. These ghosts may be big, but they're definitely not scary. Egg Quarters is a level where you must infiltrate Eggman's command center as Rouge, and you gotta find three keys to access the room. Since this is the base of Dr. Eggman, Eggman has his own surveillance drone called the Egg Beetle. A robot that does look more like a real beetle that flies around the hall searching for intruders. The Egg Beetle makes a loud noise which tells you when it's near. It uses a scanner to detect intruders, and if you're detected, it will sound an alarm and spawn in small little drones in front of you that shoot out lasers. The beetle is also invincible. If you try to hit it, you will just get zapped. Luckily, the beetle doesn't have the best sight as it cannot detect you if you hide in any shadow. E-1000 is next, located in Pyramid Cave, Death Chamber, and Egg Quarters. E-1000 is a mass-produced E-Series robot that makes up the bulk of Eggman's security, and if you look closely, they're colored red, just like Gamma. I guess Eggman wanted to commemorate Gamma. I mean, he was Eggman's most trusted, reliable, and loyal trooper in the Eggman army. Although Eggman never did find out about his betrayal. Besides looking like Gamma, the robots have twin blaster arms, meaning they'll shoot two bullets at you at the same time. And in Death Chamber, some of the robots can chase you while hovering. Defeating them shouldn't be a problem. If you took out the other E-Series robots in SA1 quickly, then you'll have no trouble at all. Our final two enemies are found in Green Hill Zone, and to get to this stage in the first place, you basically have to beat the whole game. That's right, you gotta 100% it. I'm talking about getting all A ranks, all 5 missions completed, all 180 emblems, and everything in Chow World completed. Ah yes, the joys of completing Chow World. You gotta get a Chow, give them animals, or Tim Hortons coffees that they can level up, feed them lots of oranges, and finally, have them compete in races and karate matches. If you know how the OP animal trick works, then leveling them up isn't a problem. And after all of that, you will unlock Green Hill Zone, where you meet two of Eggman's oldest badniks, the Buzz Bomber and Chopper. The Buzz Bomber will fly in and try to shoot you while the Chopper leaps out of the water attempting to bite you. They're not challenging, but this is the first time these two enemies were brought to 3D.
well, all of you cool viewers, that is pretty much it for this video. I've showed you all the enemies in Sonic Adventure 2. Started with the infamous gun truck, and ended with the Buzz Bomber, Chopper, and Green Hill Zone, which was totally worth it to unlock just to see them. Sonic Adventure 2 has way more enemies than Adventure 1, and all these enemies are all pretty unique in their own way, and can be quite a pain in the hard mode stages, especially the artificial chaos experiments. But I myself like a good challenge. You can also see that three of Gun's robots, the Rhino Jet, Mono Beetle, and Spark Beetle, are very similar to the Rhino Tank, Spinner, and Thunder Spinner from SA1 in terms of attacks and behavior. The next couple of videos, I want to focus on a certain edgelord that has his own game, so stay tuned for those. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps me out, and I will see you all in the next one.